Now, we all know PragerU. I have made several videos on PragerU uh, because they just, keep, see, they just keep pumping out those bangers, you know? And uh, I can't get enough of it. Now, something unique about PragerU that is actually not very unique at all and is consistent among basically every single right-wing demagoguery propaganda channel on YouTube is that they lie. But when they lie, it's not like oh, well, it could just be construed as a different opinion. I mean, they will just lie about things that happened or didn't happen. Uh, we've, we've, gone over, we've gone over so many PragerU videos, and the, most, the hardest part of, of covering a PragerU video is just looking into the scenario they bring up and finding out what actually happened, because PragerU always lies about it. So I don't know what's going to be happening here with this video. It's called, What Do We Do About the Homeless? Which is, you know, pretty interesting title. What do we do about the homeless? You know, I would like to think we provide them affordable housing, um, or free housing even, and try to get them into a position where they can work and uh, make enough money that make enough money that they can not be homeless anymore and be well off financially. That's, you know, an ideal world. But I imagine PragerU views that as uh, bad. So let's get right into it. I'm, I'm excited. What do they got for me? What do we do about the homeless? This is one of the most vexing public policy problems we face. If you live in a big city, especially on the West Coast, you literally face it every day. And ah, I already see where they're going with this one. All right. So for those of you guys that aren't super in the know and super with it, with conservative uh, dog whistles, they're basically trying to paint the very progressive West Coast, because, um, you know, California, Oregon, and Washington State, very progressive, also packed with large cities. What's California have? San Diego, LA, uh, San Francisco, uh, what else? Those are like three of the biggest cities in the fucking country in one state. What else do they have? There's tons of smaller cities. I live in Palm Springs, which is like a smaller city. Um, Sacramento. Yeah, you have to realize, though, L.A. is fucking massive because it's like other cities that don't count as L.A. connect to L.A. and spread out over like hundreds of miles. It's insanely massive. Uh, in Oregon, what do you have? Portland is the first thing that comes to mind. What else do you have in uh, in Oregon? What other, what other big cities do you have in, in uh, Oregon? Oh, yeah, San Bernardino is in California. Vallejo. I oh, Listen, I don't know anything about Oregon. Obviously, you have Seattle. So... The West Coast is chock full of big cities. And you know what big cities tend to have? More educated people in their populace, and they tend to be more, like, ethnically diverse. As you can imagine, you've got a lot of people living in these cities, and because of that, they tend to be more progressive. But something you have to realize is when you've got a lot of people living in a place, you're going to have a lot of homeless people there just due to the natural fact that you've got so many people crammed into one area that is like a city. However, I feel like PragerU is about to try to claim that the homelessness problems in these large cities are caused by Democrat leadership uh, because Democrats tend to be in charge of large cities because large cities tend to be better educated and better educated people typically vote uh, Democrat. So let's see. On the West Coast, you literally face it every day. And every day, it seems to get worse. Why? Let's start Capitalism? with a couple facts. First, the word itself is misleading. Homelessness is not primarily a housing problem. It's a human problem. The primary drivers of homelessness are drug addiction and mental illness. Untrue. Woo! Already a blatant lie. So one of the largest causes for homelessness is drug addiction. Let's go ahead and look into that. Here we have nationalhomeless.org fact sheet on addiction. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. A common stereotype of the homeless population is that they are all alcoholics or drug abusers. The truth is that a high percentage of homeless people do struggle with substance abuse, but addiction should be viewed as illnesses and require a great deal of treatment, counseling, and support to overcome. Substance abuse is both a cause and a result of homelessness, often arising after people lose their housing. This is 100% true. The idea that, like, 
uh, homeless people are, are homeless because they're drug addicts or whatever is, comp- is just overwhelmingly statistically not the case. Most of the time, it's you end up becoming homeless, then you turn to drugs because what the fuck else is there to do? If you're out there living on the street and you're struggling to get food, and you have to live in a fucking, like, makeshift tent under a highway, if your friend offers you heroin, of course you're going to take some fucking heroin because it's going to make it feel like you're floating through space for a few hours, you know? Um, it, it's, it's pretty... Di- it makes a lot of sense. And as for mental illness, uh, well, I imagine mental illness probably comes pretty quickly with homelessness as well. Uh, judging by, I can't imagine another position to be in that would cause you more mental anguish. Um, but I, I can imagine mental illness can cause homelessness, but isn't that a problem with our country not having proper facilities to help treat people dealing with mental illness? According to data from UCLA's California Policy Lab, approximately three quarters of people living in cars, tents, and on the streets suffer from serious mental illness, drug addiction, or both. I wonder if we read that thing that they just cited, if it's going to say that uh, the homelessness causes the drug addiction like every other source tends to do. I wonder if that'll be the case or they're just going to leave that out because they want to suggest that uh, people are getting addicted to drugs and it's making them homeless. So it's their own fault. That's what's going to be. This is what the the end of this video is going to be. People doing drugs end up homeless. It's their fault. They should have made the personal choice not to do drugs. That's what the video is going to be about. Second, despite these conditions, the homeless actually make rational decisions about where they want to live. Not surprisingly, they move to the most permissive environment they can find. Yeah, no Make your city attractive for the homeless, and they'll beat a path to your doorway. The yeah, Venice yeah. Boulevard under... Yeah, do, do you want to be homeless living in bumfuck nowhere? Or do you want to be homeless living in the middle of a large city where there's a lot of people around that you can probably beg for change from or at the very least maybe find like a, a shelter or something to, to to help you out? No city is attractive if you're homeless. Being homeless sucks. I mean, if you're homeless, then it's like your best option, usually. ...pass on the border of Los Angeles and Culver City brings home this point. It's one of thousands of concrete structures in Los Angeles County, but there's a curious detail. The Los Angeles side is full of tents, and the Culver City side is empty. Why? Because the two Probably cities have different public policies. Wait, I'm really curious what PragerU is going to try to do with this one. Are they actually going to try to suggest that California or L.A. was in the wrong because they allowed homeless people to set up tent cities? Los Angeles has affected... By the way, do you know where homeless people are if they don't ha- if they're not allowed to build tent cities in areas like underneath overpasses and whatnot? Because if you're going to have homeless people in your area, you for well, for starters, you don't want them to be homeless at all. You want to give them housing um, and give them the opportunity to get back on their feet, ideally, um, you know, rehab and what have you. Um, but if you're going to have homeless people and you're going to have them in your city, you want them to be building little tent cities and communities under overpasses, because if they're not there, then they're sitting on the sidewalk outside of businesses and whatnot. And and people tend not to be a huge fan of that. ...actively decriminalize public camping and drug consumption, while Culver City enforces the law. This pattern... <laughs> oh my god, this is the most brain-scrambled statement I've ever heard in my life. Los Angeles has effectively decriminalized public camping and drug consumption. Los Angeles has effectively, so not really, decriminalized drug use and public camping. While Culver City enforces the law. While Culver City enforces the law. What does Prager you think the law is? Do you th- Would Prager you say, hmm, so uh, in Oklahoma... You can't have or smoke weed, but in Colorado, you can. And that's because Oklahoma enforces the law. What the fuck do you think the law is? Are we going to get like another, the law is is divine and, and determined by God, but these liberal Democrat cities and states are going against the law by changing the law? The law is the law. It's what the government decides is legal, illegal, and regulated. That's all it is. Also... 
Los Angeles has not effectively decriminalized drug use. Plenty of drug busts happen in Los Angeles. However, from what I've heard, the cops are typically not going to go after homeless people who are like shooting up heroin or smoking crack because they usually have a very small amount of it. Most of the time are not distributing it. And usually when it comes to the cops priorities, they more so want to go after like the, the, peop the richer people selling the drugs to the homeless people, not the homeless people who are consuming them and, and buying them. They want to go after the source usually. Don't get me wrong, the cops are always down to beat up some homeless people. They do it all the time. This pattern that the homeless go where the policy environment is the most permissive can be seen up and down the West Coast. In yep. San Francisco County, it's estimated that 30% of the homeless migrated there after becoming homeless somewhere else. In the city of Seattle- Oh, you know what's actually very interesting? That's a huge part of this as well. Homeless busing, I think is the term for it. Homeless busing. <clears throat> Quinn Raber arrived at San Francisco bus station lugging a canvas bag containing all of his belongings, jeans, socks, underwear, pajamas. It was 1 p.m. on a typically overcast day in August, and unassuming 27-year-old Raber seemed worn out. His skin was sun reddened, he was unshaven, and a hat was pulled over his uh, ruffled blonde hair. After showing the driver a one-way ticket purchased for him by the city of San Francisco, he climbed the steps of the gray-bound bus. He traveled 2,275 miles over three days to reach his de destination, Indianapolis. These cities, a lot of these cities have bus, uh, like busing systems to get homeless people out of their town to other cities because they'd rather spend money on moving the problem away rather than fixing the problem, which is just giving homeless people the opportunity to get back up on their feet. Well, that number is 51%. The San Francisco Chronicle estimates that hundreds of homeless individuals move to the Bay Area each year because of the perception that it is a sanctuary for people who are unwilling to participate in programs designed to get them off and keep them off a life in the streets. There it is, dude. There it is, my dudes. When do I miss? Can I please miss just once? Can I please miss just once? Do you... Listen, if there's any, if there's any PragerU fans, any PragerU viewers watching right now, I want you to know, I have not seen this video before. I don't watch any of the videos that I cover on stream before I cover them on stream. This is my blind, 100% fresh-faced, no, like, hints, no spoilers reaction to this video. And I just fucking 100% predicted all of their talking points. Do you think maybe that lends some credence to my argument? If you're a PragerU, like, conservative viewer, and you watch this video, please, maybe recognize that I predicted the argument that your demagogue that you enjoy was about to make and maybe consider, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm going to look into this topic a bit more and not just watch the PragerU video and run off with it. And be okay, no more. Not going to do any research myself. I watched the PragerU video. God, for God's sakes, be a little critical of the content you consume. At first glance, this would seem to make no sense. Why would an individual with no shelter or stable source of income move to one of the most expensive cities in the country? But in the world of the homeless, it makes perfect sense. That's because they operate under a different set of incentives than the average citizen. In a research oh survey of homeless migrants in Seattle, 15% said they came to access homeless services, 10% came for legal marijuana, and 16% were transients who were traveling or visiting when they decided to set up camp. But this okay. dramatically understates the biggest draw of all, the de facto legalization of street camping, drug consumption, and property crime. As former Seattle public... Yes. If, you're go if you are homeless, then you want a place to be able to set up camp. Also, what do they mean by property crime? What, 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 that's so broad. Is that even... <laughs> Property crime. Is that stealing? Is that trespassing? Property crime is a category of crime usually involving private property that includes, among other crimes, burglary, larceny, theft, motor vehicle theft, arson, shoplifting, and vandalism. What? Wait. 
Is Prager you trying to claim that Los Angeles, Seattle, and uh, uh, San Francisco are okay with burglary, larceny, theft, motor vehicle theft, arson, shoplifting, and vandalism? That they're totally cool with it. They're all, you know, hey, listen, we're, hey, just get, go rob that convenience store. We don't really care. Shoot up some heroin right here. We're not going to stop you. Do they really think that's what's going on in, in Los Angeles? Yeah. Safety advisor Scott Lindsay has shown the city is now home to a large population of homeless, prolific offenders people who commit property crimes to feed their addictions, but are rarely held accountable for those selves. crimes by the criminal justice system. Hold on. Can we talk about how obvious the solution to this problem is? So you've got an entire part of society that is homeless, that has fallen into drug addiction because of their circumstances, and because of their drug addiction, they need to get more drugs or they'll die. I don't think you guys realize, but if you're like a heroin addict and you're addicted and you don't get more heroin, you will probably die. Heroin withdrawals, and heroin is very popular among homeless people, heroin withdrawal will kill you. Alcohol withdrawal will kill you. Withdrawals are no joke. So for a lot of these people... It's either go steal some fucking rims off of a car, because you can do that. Like you could, like if you have the tools for it, you can find a car like parked in a dark parking lot, and it usually take a good amount of stuff off of that car uh, and run off with it and sell it or pawn it for a decent amount of money. Not like anything substantial, but something decent. And uh, they're yeah, they're they're gonna do that for drugs. If they get caught, they'll probably go to jail or, and they'll be or at least be stopped and apprehended. But you realize that people who commit crimes typically don't commit crimes out in the open where they're going to be caught doing it by the cops. Yeah, that's, it's usually not common. So is ever increasing homelessness our inevitable future? It's if probably. our goal is to make life as attractive as possible for the homeless, the answer is yes. If our goal is to actually... Homelessness is going to keep getting worse if we're too nice to homeless people? I'm sorry. I don't care if L L.A. gives gives homeless people, like, a, a daily free hand job from a supermodel, okay? I don't care if, if L.A. Is as, is as nice to homeless people as you could possibly imagine. I still don't want to be homeless. I'm going to be honest, they can be handing out free uh, supermodel blowjobs to the homeless in L.A., and I won't want to be homeless. Because I promise you, and homeless people know this, everybody knows this, uh, not being homeless will always be better than being homeless, okay? I guess they, they can just pull themselves up by their bootstraps. That's the hilarious thing as well. That, and I feel like this is ironic enough that, that PragerU would say it. The, the pull yourself up by your bootstraps, um, the saying, why the phrase pull yourself out by, pull yourself up by your bootstraps is nonsense. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps is a common phrase in American political discourse, particularly present in conservative rhetoric about self-reliance. The concept is simple. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps means to succeed or uh, elevate yourself without any outside help. But when you examine this expression it's, and its current meaning, it doesn't seem to make much sense. To pull yourself up by your bootstraps is actually physically impossible. In fact, the original meaning of the phrase was more along the lines of to try to do something completely absurd. Literally, the conservative mantra of pull yourself up by your bootstraps originates from basically the term when pigs fly. It is the, not only is the, the practical idea of doing this pretty much impossible, but like, like what they mean when they say pull yourself up by your bootstraps, it's practically impossible for a lot of people. Not only that, but the saying that the mantra they repeat comes from is physically impossible 
and used to mean to do something absurd or impossible. Conservative rhetoric blows my fucking mind every day. I will never be surprised at how wild conservative rhetoric is, and I do this for a living. Help the homeless, the answer is no. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner is a Democrat, but his approach to homelessness is a world apart from his counterparts in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle. Okay, it is simply not that? acceptable for people to live on the streets. It is not good for them, and it is not good for the city, Turner has said. Okay. Houston's policy is a perfect example of what Turner calls a tough love approach. The city has built housing for the chronically homeless, formed okay. a coalition of nonprofit partners, I like what uh, this city has done, actually. I think one of the things that they did was actually something that I suggested one time, like on stream. Um, so I think it's Houston, right? They're talking about Houston? Dallas? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dallas. No, no, okay, maybe this is a different city. But I know in Dallas, Texas, what they did is they have a huge trash problem. Like, people in Dallas, Texas litter like a motherfucker. There is so much garbage on the streets. It is wild. And so... um what they ended up doing was they started giving homeless people like pretty well-paying jobs and the equipment to just go around and clean up the city. Like they would go out and they would collect trash and they'd get paid for it. It's a job you don't need any experience for. They literally just give you a stick and a few bags, like a little sharp stick. You pick up a little trash, you go boop, or a little, a little claw, you go boop, boop, boop and, and some trash bags. And you turn it in and, and, I, and you, you get paid, right? And that right there is, a, you know, a, a job that you can do without any experience. You can be a high school dropout and do this. You can be a middle school dropout and do this. You can be an elementary school dropout and do this. Um, yeah, and it's useful for cleaning up the city. It generally makes the city better. This is some, this is a, a practice I think needs to be adopted across, like, every si big city in America, if I'm being completely honest. Passing obvious lying is common sense. Is, it t is typically part of conservative propaganda? Of course, yeah and lobbied the state government for more mental health and addiction services. Cool. At the same time, Turner has enforced a strict ban on public camping and promoted a citywide Ooh. campaign to dis- Wait, you don't need to have public camping if you've built tons of housing. Wait, if you built tons of free housing for the homeless and you've got all the resources for them there, they don't need to build tent cities. That's like saying that that's like saying, yeah, so we we give everybody in our city a free car, but we banned riding horses. It's like, well, yeah, if, well, sure. You, you, people don't need to be riding horses around the city when everybody has a free car. Yeah, no, no shit. Scourge citizens from giving money to panhandlers. The results are as instructive as they are stunning. Over the past eight years, Houston has reduced its homeless population by 54%, while it has skyrocketed in West Coast cities. How much do you want to bet part of that has to do with shipping homeless people that are in Houston out? Listen, Houston seems to have done a good thing, but for it to be that drastic of a drop, I imagine a large part of that has to be homeless people leaving and going to, like, L.A., or San Francisco because of the busing that they do. Yeah, the, a lot of the time it's very hard to break out of homeless, uh, like homelessness. Something that a lot of people don't realize is that the hardest thing it is easier to go from being from making like fifty grand a year, like pretty like lower to middle standard like middle class salary here in America, to get from there to making like. 100k a year than it is to go from making a dollar a day or like a few dollars a day uh begging or or co like collecting trash to, to to recycle for a little bit of money as a homeless person to get up to a point where you can afford an apartment and just not be homeless anymore and be stable in that respect that is an unbelievably difficult barrier to break um compared to going from making 50k a year to 100k a year per se like like it, it's way easier to go from like doing all right to being well off to doing terribly to being all right. That's a lot harder. Different policies, different results. Where a Seattle politician opposes hosing down feces covered sidewalks because hoses are racist. He I, 
I think we're gonna check on that claim really quick. So a Seattle, let, let's, let's hear this really quick. Different policies, different results. Where a Seattle politician opposes hosing down feces covered sidewalks because hoses are racist. A Seattle politician is against hosing down feces covered sidewalks. Seattle, ah, well, here's a fact check. Of course it's a lie. <clears throat> No, Seattle doesn't refuse to hose poop from sidewalks because it's racially insensitive. A minor Seattle street cleaning issue from mid-2017 was played up by partisan websites as if it were a major, uh, major racial controversy. False. The city of Seattle does not, hose down, does not hose down sidewalks to remove human waste because the practice would be racially insensitive. It's just not true. Origin. In July 2017, the Seattle Times reported that two judges in King County, Washington, Superior Court had expressed concerns to county officials about the preponderance, preponderance of crime around the courthouse located at 3rd Avenue and James Street in Seattle. Two King County court judges are asking for help cleaning up the courthouse at 3rd Avenue and James Street after they say two jurors and half a dozen employees have been assaulted. The nearby blocks host most of the city's homeless shelter beds and many of its social service outlets, which draw those who need help uh, and the people who prey on them. That's nothing new, Judge Jim Rogers said. But for whatever reasons, things have gotten worse over the past few years, and jurors and potential jurors report uh, being afraid to go to the courthouse, the judges said. The judges said they have started hearing from jurors who want to do their civic duty jury duty at the county's uh, superior courthouse in Kent because they don't want to come to the downtown courthouse. So there's like homeless people in cots because there's like homeless like outreach setups around where the courthouse is and people are afraid of homeless people so they don't want to go to the courthouse to do jury duty. If I'm being completely honest, it sounds like an excuse from people who really don't want to do jury duty because jury duty fucking sucks. Um, Judge Laura Ivey Inveen told the Metropolitan King County Council's Committee on Government Accountability and Oversight about two incidents, one in late May, one in June, in which ju jurors were attacked in separate incidents outside the courthouse's Third Avenue entrance. On other occasions, Inveen said employees have been spat upon, slammed against a wall, or punched. Although cleaning and patrolling the area immediately surrounding the courthouse would not address some of the deep-seated issues faced by denizens of the space, it would send a signal that somebody was paying attention, she said. She and Rogers asked the county to take immediate steps to clean up the courthouse with a daily power wash of the surrounding sidewalks, which reek of urine and excrement. They also asked that the county empty trash cans more frequently, remove bus stop benches, remove tents from adjoining park, and increase the presence of law enforcement, not just to arrest people, but to deter crime. Another suggestion was closing the 3rd Avenue entrance and reopening the one on 4th. Although the Times article emphasized the need for reducing crime and the fear of crime around the courthouse as the primary problem, of which cleaning up human waste was just one element, many right-leaning websites focused on the sanitation aspect and one county's council member's uh, comments in particular. In the middle of the story, the Times quoted Councilmember Larry Gossett as saying he didn't like the idea of power washing the sidewalks because it brought back images of use of hoses against civil rights activists. The single line was plucked from its context and used as fodder for articles bearing headlines such as Seattle Councilman cleaning poop off sidewalks is racist. The Daily Caller and Seattle Councilman cr uh, criticizes plan to hose excrement, excrement, fuck, I'm reading too much, off of sidewalks because it's racially insensitive to the blaze. And Turning Point USA reduced the whole issue to a single meme asserting that the city of Seattle leaves poop on their sidewalks because hosing it off is racially insensitive. Who would have thought conservative demagoguery uh, uh, is full of lies? These things like PragerU and Turning Point USA and The Blaze uh, and The Daily Wire just lie to their viewers? Oh my god, who could have possibly thought that? Let's really go in on debunking this one. Of course, none of these right-leaning sources made clear that Gossett didn't actually use the term racist or racially insensitive, nor did any of them report, as more moderate news outlets did, the full context of Gossett's remarks, which was that he felt merely cleaning up waste would essentially be treating a symptom rather than addressing the larger underlying problem. Tacoma radio station KNKX, for example, observed that 
There is, however, some pushback to some of the cleanup proposals. King County Councilman Larry Gossett says he's worried that power washing the end increased security will affect the vulnerable population on the street. Most of the emphasis seems to be on safety for the jurors and the qu courthouse staff and not enough attention being put to underlying problems that give rise to some of the disruptive activities of the lumpen proletariat of the lumpen proletariat. Okay. Based out on the streets, Gossett said. Likewise, the Seattle Times also included that missing context. Some committee members expressed concern about addressing the symptoms of the area's problems without getting to the cause. Councilmember Larry Gossett said he didn't like the idea of power washing the sidewalks because it brought back images of use of hoses against civil rights activists. So here's what he actually said, and here's what PragerU tried to say. Also, um, if you think that this imagery that they use here um, isn't like a dog whistle, like where they have the, the, the street here, the sidewalk covered in poop, um, if you think it's not a dog whistle that uh, Prager U, which is notoriously racist and is literally like Prager U's literally made pro slavery videos in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and assume just based on how much Prager U I've watched, I feel like I probably watch more Prager U than the average conservative um, that they're they're dog whistling like black people and homeless people on the sidewalk. Like that's that's the, the dog whistle here is at the very least supposed to be um, that it, you know, they're talking about poop. But they're also referring to the homeless people on the sidewalk, you know, because we just read that they had cots and, and outreach centers that were hosted, like, on the sidewalk in front of these buildings. Sam. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Prager, you lying blatantly. Once again, who would have fucking thought? For sidewalks, because hoses are racist, Houston fights in the courts for the right to clean up encampments. We're also, they, they, still, they still clean the area. They, they literally just said, the, the gossip guy literally just said, yeah, no, we, like, just cleaning up the sidewalk's not going to solve this problem. Like, we, we need to do a more, like, deep down to the roots change, like, to, to fix this problem. You're, you're literally just cleaning away the symptoms rather than dealing with the problem. California progressives push for more drug injection sites and have decriminalized thefts under $950. Wait. Oh, my God. This is great. They don't know, or they're they're just lying to their audience about uh, safe injection sites. Let's look up safe injection sites and why they're a good thing. What's the evidence that supervised drug injection sites save lives? <clears throat> the story has been updated to reflect the fact that a study mentioned in the piece published by the International Journal of Drug Policy in August 2018 has since been retracted. As drug-related deaths rise uh, to record numbers, at least a dozen U.S. cities are considering opening supervised injection sites where people can use illicit drugs with trained staff present ready to respond in case of an overdose. The future of such proposals in the U.S. is uncertain. A California bill that would greenlight a pilot injection site in San Francisco awaits the governor's signature, but a, a representative of the Justice Department vowed to crack down on any such site in a recent public statement. Critics say supervised injection sites encourage drug use and bring crime to surrounding communities. Proponents argue that they save lives and can help people in addiction reconnect. Help people in addiction? Ah, uh, okay. Reconnect with society and get health services. Listen. Guys, if you are addicted to heroin, which is the most common drug you would be injecting anyway, if you are addicted to heroin, like I said before, you grow a very quick chemical dependency on it, which means if you stop doing it, you may die. You very well may die. You, you just, yeah, you just fucking die if you don't, if you don't do more heroin. It, it, heroin withdrawal is no, no fucking joke. So the question is, do you want homeless people or just heroin addicts in general or other types of drug addicts, do you want them doing it in an unsanitary, dangerous environment like some kind of fucking old house? Or do you want them doing it in a place that has doctors and medical staff there that can treat overdoses or perhaps even help drug addicts wean themselves off? of the drug they're addicted to so they don't go through deadly withdrawals. Because that's how you get over deadly withdrawals. You you slowly wean yourself off of it by doing a little bit less every single, like, session. Because if you just quit cold turkey, you'll fucking die. I assume we don't want, we, you don't want them dying, you know? Under $950, Houston imposes consequences not only for theft, but for aggressive panhandling, window washing, and other street obstructions. Yeah, As this Texas city has demonstrated, systems. local leaders in cities of any size can meaningfully reduce homelessness through... 
Hold on, which city is it? I want to make sure that this is true. As thefts under $950, Houston imposes consequences not only for theft, but- Houston. Let's go ahead and look into this. In the 2020 homeless uh, count and survey shows that we can expect to see about 3,974 people experiencing homelessness at any given moment in the Houston region. Oh, here's a website dedicated to discussing homelessness- in Houston. Let's check it out. Here's like a bunch of survey facts, frequently asked questions. Coalition is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to lead the development and advocacy and coordination of community strategies to prevent and end homelessness. Wait, of course Houston is having such a good time, like doing so well when it comes to homelessness. They've got like an entire nonprofit here that raises money and helps get homeless people back on their feet. I'm totally in favor of this. This is fine. My problem with the PragerU video is they're suggesting that homelessness is a choice and it's homeless people's fault that they're homeless. But for aggressive panhandling, window washing, and other street obstructions. As this Texas city has demonstrated, local leaders in cities of any size can meaningfully reduce homelessness through a strategy that mixes compassion with common sense enforcement. If cities stop okay. allowing public encampments and open drug consumption and start prosecuting property crimes, they will have more- uh, That's not how it works. That's not what that is. So here you have like a, a reasonable statement, if it weren't coming from someone from PragerU, mixing compassion with enforcement. You want to mix compassion with pragmatic policy that helps get homeless people on their feet. However, being more tough on crime doesn't get homeless people on their feet. It puts them in jail or prison where they are further, like, where it's going to be harder for them to get a job. I'm sorry. Point me to a felon who says, yeah, no, I think my felony is, uh, it is really helping me out in the job scene. How many of those homeless people do you want to bet are homeless because they were arrested for something and now have a a a fucking uh, have have something on their record and they can't get a job? No one will hire them. They will have much more success redirecting the homeless away from a life of self destruction and toward a life of hope through mental health treatment, drug rehab, and job training. That's what. But not for free, baby, because that would be socialism. What we all want, isn't it? So why don't we do it? I'm Christopher Rufo, senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Prager University. Well, that was a hell of a video, huh? Pretty bizarre. Listen, let me give you guys my thoughts on, homeless, on homelessness and how we fix it, okay? Here's how you fix homelessness, okay? Make me the mayor of any city, all right? And this is what we do, all right? First thing you want to do, allocate money into building facilities that act as a, a station for homeless people to be both housed, fed, and to be given a job. And said job to start should probably be to help clean up the city. It is a very good entry-level job. Um, it should be considered a government job which usually looks pretty good on like a resume if any of these homeless people want to stop doing this job and get a new job. Um, like help cleaning up the city. That, that's always a good thing. Uh, safe injection sites for people who are chemically dependent on drugs that will kill you if you stop doing them cold turkey so they can be weaned off of it. Mental health facilities. Uh, and of course they should be unionized. And um, yeah, you just get, fucking get them up on their feet. There's a lot of programs that could be done. The problem is... Even Democrat leadership in a lot of these cities, Republican leadership especially, but even Democratic uh, leadership are still, they're not going to be sticking their neck out for homeless people. They're not going to be allocating a substantial amount of money to help homeless people unless the homeless problem is so overwhelming that it's killing the city. And uh, unfortunately, you know, listen, as much as L.A. does suck, not a big fan of L.A., uh, contrary to what conservatives will tell you, L.A. is not dying as a city. It really isn't dying. It, it is still popping the fuck off. And until L.A. starts to actually be dying as a city, then the politicians aren't going to do anything about homelessness, left or right. 
Yeah, housing in LA is insanely fucked. Hey, let me tell you this right now. Um, I mean, she said I I have a friend, all right, who is also a streamer. She's super cool. She lives in an apartment in LA, and it is a pretty small apartment. It fits the the need that she has for it. But uh, de okay, I guess you guys guess. I'm pretty sure she said this on stream before, so it's fine. She's got one bedroom, her living room, a small little area for a dining room, and a kitchen. It's a pretty small apartment. I can probably go from the kitchen and then a bathroom to, like, the bathroom, which is the longest path in the house or in the apartment, in probably 20 steps or less. And I mean 20 small steps. It's very small. Her rent is about as much as mine. And my my rent is $1,650 a month, $1,650 a month. And I have a two-bedroom, two-bath, like... I don't even know how many square feet. It's fairly large. Like they're like my bedroom here is like my bedroom is the size of Denim's living room. And that's cuz fucking LA housing is so off the hook. But there's a reason why a lot of streamers and people in this particular industry want to live in LA and that's because there's just so many business opportunities for collaborations and stuff like that. All the streamers live in LA. So if you're going to go do a streamer hangout and, and and fuck around with other streamers, you do it in LA. I really do need to I really do need to spend more time in LA and like hang out with other streamers and do IRL streams. Maybe we'll start doing that. Would you guys watch that kind of shit? We should start doing that. Yeah. Um we can do we can stream walking down Skid Row. Maybe do some interviews. Um You were at her place, of course, we knew. Yeah, me and Lonnie have been there a few times. All right. Anyway, chat. That was a good segment. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. And even if you aren't new, make sure to ring the bell icon next to the subscribe button so YouTube actually notifies you whenever I upload a new video. Um, you can go ahead and donate or subscribe or gift a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. If it were not for you guys, I wouldn't be able to pay that $16.50 a month rent. Uh, you can also super chat or hit the join button, become a channel member on YouTube, which is basically like subbing on my website or on Twitch, only it's on YouTube. And you can also donate, subscribe, or gift a sub, or Prime sub for free if you have Twitch Prime, which comes with your Amazon Prime account over on Twitch. Thank you so much for your support, and have a good day.